Gliding started in the early 20s of the 20th century. Uh, essentially, the idea was after uh, more or less the powered flight has been maybe not mastered, but you know, really well, uh, uh, you know, f f fully engaged. Uh, a lot of people started thinking uh, about coming back, you know, to the um, whole sport of uh, flying, which started in 19th century with gliding. Um, so. Uh, Again, uh, the pilots uh, started to construct, uh, to try uh, engineless uh, aircraft, uh, what we know uh, now as gliders. Uh, what it all started essentially by flights from the slopes of the mountains, of the hills. Uh, this was the only way uh, then they could fly without engine. Uh, so then, uh, well, gliding was essentially, uh, you know, as the word says, gliding down uh, from the slope of the mountain at the distance of maybe one kilometer, kilometer maybe three kilometers. Uh, in the end of 20s, the first uh, competition started to be organized and uh, this were uh, more or less the distance competition, like uh, one pilot flew three kilometers, the other pilot flew five kilometers. This was kind of easy, essentially, this distance from the place of launch. And again, uh, about, the same th uh, about this time, in 20s, the pilot started to notice that uh, they can not only fly down the mountains, but also that, for example, when the wind blows across the mountain range, ac across the hill, uh, the slope of the hill will deflect the wind upwards, and this uh, upward uh, draft of air can be used to raise the gliders up, the glider up. Because what we have to remember is that the glider is always flying down uh, with respect to the surrounding air. But if the glider pilot finds the place where the air itself is coming up, then effectively the glider can fly up. And this is you know, principle which we use uh, until today. So uh, first it was, as I say, it was just go coming down the slope of the mountain. Then uh, pilots started to fly essentially along mountain ridges uh, using the uh, deflected wind, deflected by the mountain range upwards. Then the pilot started to maybe accidentally, maybe on purpose, venture uh, a bit farther from the uh, hills, from the mountain ranges, and noticed that uh, even over the plains, there are places where the, where the air rises up. How come? Well, simply, the sun uh, heats the air down by the earth, and as everybody knows, the hot air will come up. Uh, the hot air forms so-called thermals, columns of rising air, and this is what started to be uh, utilized. Now, uh, what this requires is it requires a much better glider than for uh, slope uh, glide, uh, soaring, slope gl gliding, because uh, this uh, rising columns of air, they are not as fast as, it have, uh, as uh, they are rising in the mountains. Uh, also, uh, the problem is to find such a column of a rising air, which is really not easy. So first it was, uh, well, these uh, thermals, as we call them, were found uh, essentially by luck, uh, also by uh, observing the clouds, uh, because the clouds form on top of such thermals. But then the, uh, in about end of 20s, beginning of 30s, the instruments started to be used. There is this uh, now indispensable in the gliding instrument, uh, called Vario, from Variometer, which uh, tells the pilot if he is rising or falling down uh, with respect to the surrounding air. Sounds simple, but the idea was so uh, novel at the time that the first glider pilots were actually concealing the fact that they are using these variometers, that it is possible to find, uh, to understand that pilot is in the column of rising air using such an instrument. There is this uh, story, probably true, that one of the leading competing glider pilots at the time was uh, hiding his uh, instrument var variometer in his bag before going to the glider and was, going, uh, and was telling the fellow glider pilots that he was just a thermos with a coffee there. Or <laughs> what re in reality was the instrument which was allowing him to beat uh, them you know, in the game. Uh, now, uh, <coughs> when other glider pilots uh, learned about that, uh, some of them essentially you know, published uh, the thing, popular popularized the use of this instrument, and uh, well, this is how we fly today. We essentially have this uh, essential instrument, uh, variometer, which tells us whether the air around us is rising or not, which of course uh, we first have to find it, but it confirms. And that's uh, 
tells us that we should uh, circle in such a place and gain altitude. So uh, this is how the sport was uh, developing. Uh, by the early 30s, the distances flown by the glider, uh, using all this uh, knowledge learned the previous decade, started to, be, uh, to become so long that it became impractical to race, to compete just based on the distance flown, because the distances started to uh, become uh, quite long, say 50 kilometers. Uh, well, it was fairly troublesome, you know, to, for everybody st starts and then some competitors fly uh, 50 kilometers and land somewhere in some, somebody's field uh, just to retrieve the glider back to the uh, home airfield was a problem. So uh, the gliding competition started to be organized uh, more and more often on closed circuits. And the length of the circuits started to become longer and longer. Right now it's not uncommon to have the length of the circuit 500 km. So, uh, well, from people outside of Europe, uh, 500 km may not sound like much, but in Europe 500 km is essentially more than uh, many of countries here have across. So you can imagine that now it becomes like, uh, you know, truly uh, major sport, as, at least as far as the area covered. This 500 kilometers will be covered by the modern glider in three, four hours. So, uh, well, this is the the gliding competitions now. They essentially take play in the sky over the whole country or, the, or all over several countries. Um, so uh, this was this is how uh, the uh, competition were evolving. Now uh, I will uh, s uh, tell uh, maybe uh, a bit about the uh, locations this competition are held. So uh, right now here in Michałków we are in t uh, typical uh, plains terrain uh, competition, glind uh, competition gliding means that the pilots will exclusively uh, use the uh, rising air due to the action of the sun. Essentially they are converting the energy of the sun to uh, the fuel for the gliders. Uh, now what is still possible and of which of course is used is flying in the mountains which is slightly different. It's coming a bit more to the roots of the gliding which originated in the mountains where uh, not only uh, rising columns of air due to, due to heating by the sun are available and of course in mountains the, it is available as well but uh, additionally uh, the uh, wind deflected by the mountain ranges uh, can be used uh, there are also different types of the action of this uh, sun in the mountains I won't get into details here but there are also a very powerful phenomena called, uh, called uh, mountain waves which is uh, well maybe if you ever looked at the fast flowing stream uh, you could see that uh, in the vicinity of the obstacles at the bottom of the stream, the uh, surface of the stream, it should be, you know, really smooth, is it? Like, you have uh, places in the stream when you have visible uh, bulges, when, you, when the water will go up. Well, something like this on a much grander scale is happening uh, in the vicinity of the mountains with air. So, again, without, not going, uh, without going into too much detail, in the mountains, uh, there are places where the air may be rising up to altitude of 10 kilometers, uh, 12 kilometers even. And uh, in those conditions, the competitions are also held, uh, well, allowing to fly really big distances at very high uh, velocity.